Dave with the Espresso Service Network, and today we're going to go over the Ranchilio Invicta. Um, in general, all Ranchilios are pretty easy to take panels off to get at what you need to on on, on fixing machines. Um, the Invicta is a single boiler heat exchange system, and one of its unique features is you actually can dial in a temp range and you can also, it has a low pressure uh, pre and post infusion to it too. So, um, mostly all you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver uh, to take off your side panels. It's just sim as simple as these two holes, access holes, that they got here. You gotta find your screw. There we go. And you just loosen the screws. And of course, side panels. Oh, it's nice. Yep. Uh, this particular unit, <laughs> the panels, the side panel, this is all stainless steel and it is thick and it is heavy. Oh. So we've just uh, gained access to our electronics portion of the machine, which is all on this side. The other side, we will have access to our so it's the same, same two screws? Yeah, same okay. two screws. Just loosen them. And this is the high power I'm side. sorry, you just loosened them. Yeah, you didn't you remove them. them okay. and, then, and slide it out. Okay. And the bottom clips in. These two clips right here go on the inside gotcha. of the frame right there. So to take our top off, there are four screws that you will need to loosen. There's two in the front here where this is slotted. So you will loosen them, and then you actually slide the screw back. So you just loosen it, slide it back. And then there's two screws in the back here, one right here that you loosen quite a bit. And same with over here, this screw's actually missing. And then you just lift up the front, pull forward, and lift it completely out. Now, if you have the cup warmer attachment, you will have to disconnect the wire that the cup warmer is attached to the top panel. So here's our single boiler system with heat exchangers. Uh, so a unique feature that Rinchelio just came out with is the ability you can dial in a temperature range. It's so temperature you, ranges. You're not actually dialing in a temperature. You would always have to verify your temperature with the SCASE. And of course, you can go into programming and tell the machine what that actual number is. And that number is going to vary a little bit because it is a heat exchange system. Okay, so do you use a screwdriver? You use a screwdriver. Okay, so what kind of screwdriver? A flathead. Okay, and how many notches are there for? There's four. Okay. So simply... So so right now it's facing down, so you would go to the side uh -huh. or the top or the side, okay. et, cetera, et cetera. Have you played with this at all? I've played with it, and uh, so far what I found is uh, there was only two temperature settings that were really settable. Our boiling point here is, uh, is 208, so our top two settings didn't matter because we were boiling oh, okay. coming out. Okay. And I found uh, the other thing is because it is a heat exchange system, I found that if you're running the groups consistently, that the temperature tends to climb on you. Okay. Is that typical with all heat exchange? No. Every, Everyone's every, different. Every, one's every design. Different, so. Okay. Gotcha. When you okay. say temperature range, like how big of a range? Three degrees, 10 degrees? Uh, it's probably <laughs> about a five degree difference. Oh. So you as a technician can go into the technician's menu and then, of course, go under settings and T-switch. You can, after you've tested one of the settings, so like say I'm, I'm at the, the top setting here, right? And let's say I didn't actually get 194. I'm consistently getting 199. It will automatically change all the other settings for you. You cannot individually set all the 
those settings, but that'll that'll give you a rough so that when the barista, so when you when you back out of it, it's saved. When the barista wants to see what the T switch settings are, they can go in here and say, oh, it's set for that currently. It should be roughly 199. And then of course, if they wanted to change it, they kind of know what they're changing it to. So if they change it to the left or the right, of course, this is individualized by groups. So group one is over on the right, group two is to the left. Of course, if there was a group three, group two would be your center, group three would be all the way to your right. So it, g it gives them an idea of what temperature they're looking for right. or where to go to get the temperature they're looking for. Yeah. But there is still going to be a swing because yes. it's a yes. heat exchanger yes. system. I gotcha. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. That's wonderful because um, um, uh, when people own equipment in different areas right. of the country or the world, right. uh, they're going to get different temperatures. Is it correct? Yes. So just keep in mind how this is shaped. It's kind of shaped in an arrow. So this arrow is now pointing towards the top. So gotcha. That I see that. And of course, if you wanted to go to the side here, so we're going to the right right now. So you would look over here, your right would be at 210. And of course, if I wanted to go to the bottom, then it would be at its lowest temp, which is 194. Awesome. So, and then, and then we have uh, two additional valves here. So what these are is our switching valves between low pressure and our pump pressure. So uh, you can set a time for a low pressure infusion. So it's taking your your building pressure, this is before the pump and and going to your heat exchange. So is it, it's building pressure? Yeah, it's building pressure. So what if your building pressure fluctuates a lot? Then I would recommend putting a regulator on your machine. Okay. Uh, does Ranchillo have a suggest, suggested low pressure? No, they don't. But I would suggest not going below uh, 30 PSI. Okay. Generally, I would say you're... I would, I would range it between 30. See, it depends on your building pressure, but I would range it in between 30 and 60 PSI. So it, um, can you um, translate that to bar? So 30 PSI is, is roughly two, two bar. Okay. So a, a bar is 14.5 PSI. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, I would rain, I, I would not, you know, and here again, it would be something that you could play with. Um, but obviously if your building pressure is only 40 PSI, you're gonna wanna set it for 30. Okay. If your building pressure is 90 PSI, then you'll probably wanna set it, you know, you can set it, you know, down to 30, but you might wanna set it up higher than that. Cause that would be pretty low. Is yeah. that what you're implying? Yeah. Okay. Um, and of course, then it will, you know, after the, so it's based on time, how long you want to have it on low pressure. And then once you've reached that time, so say you put it on for 10 seconds, so 10 seconds at low pressure on your brewing. So that gives you a nice infusion. And then it will switch over to pump pressure. And then of course you're brewing at nine bar. Okay. Or whatever you have your pump set up, but generally you have it set around nine, nine bar. bar. Anything about post infusion? Um, so, versus some other manufacturers, how they did it, uh, the post infusion on this, in my opinion, does not work right. Okay. Because they are basing everything on time instead of basing it on um, pulses or milliliters. So say, say you had your infusion was 10 seconds mm -hmm. and then you had your brew time of 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now you're at 30 seconds. Now you're at 30 seconds. And then you had your, um, 
your post infusion at or at one second. Well, if your brew on your main brew runs to 32 seconds, you've already passed doing the post infusion. It won't do it. So um, something they need to work on, maybe re reprogramming something. So like Slayer, Slayer has a similar system on their uh, LP. Yeah, it's LP. Yeah, but they're basing everything on milliliters and then time. So no matter what, they'll get the milliliter count, mm -hmm. no matter how long it takes to do that, and then they'll hit the the post infusion. So that's unfortunate for Ranchilio the way they had it have it set up because it won't work properly. So right. we we are not going to set up any post infusion on these machines. But the interesting thing is the LP is is a lot more money, yes, and and maybe post infusion yeah. isn't as important yeah. to you as you yeah. think. So you know. So the you know everything else is pretty basic in this machine. Here, here's their vacuum valve. Uh, I really like the Ranchilio vacuum valves. Whether you use the weight, this one's weighted, or or Sorry. you don't have a weight at all, um, you can take that weight off. Uh, I tend to use this that vacuum valve on every machine I can. Really? Uh, I just don't have the leaking. It's just a good quality vacuum valve that I don't have issues with it leaking. I don't have issues with it sticking. Um, you know, like any vacuum valve, you're going to replace it through time. Generally, I do mine once a year on every machine. Um, but they that that this particular design of a vacuum valve or anti-siphon valve is is great. I, I you know, I really like that versus everything else I've seen out there. Okay. Uh, safety valve is underneath this cover. Uh, so one of the unique things that they've done with their safety valve recently is they have actually uh, threaded it. So this is actually threaded to the safety valve. So if it ever goes off, it won't blow the top off. Right. Or blow the cap off, and then you get steam everywhere. The steam is being directed down to your drain. So you see that is threaded. And then, you know, the cap is threaded. And, of course, this cap, that, that pulls off. And now you can easily take this off. Versus other manufacturers, a lot of times the caps are in, in a fashion where the safety valve is seating down on the cap. So... You know, you have a hard time gripping the safety valve itself to get it changed. And Ranchilio has gone back to using just a standard fill probe on their machines. Where before they, for a while, they were doing off a of sight glass, but you'll notice this machine has no sight glass. A lot of manufacturers have gone away from uh, having a sight glass uh, for your steam boiler. But everything else is pretty basic. Um, you know, the, the boiler design of Ranchilio has not changed hardly at all throughout the years. It's basically the same configuration, same sizes throughout their different. Another nice thing about Ranchilio is typically on the higher end machines, the two group typically will have a 5,700 or 6,000 watt element. What what does this have? Do you know? Uh, this, I believe, is a 5,700. I'll check. I'll just put it. How is it? Well, I can check right here. So no, this one has a 4,300 watt. But really? you could easily upgrade it to a 6,000 watt if needed. Okay. 
But your tech needs to do that. Yeah, your tech would have to do that. Okay. Um, so the Rantelio specialty line, um, they're producing really nice machines yeah. at lower lower prices. Um, at lower prices. The downside is, is t typically who you're buying it from, it, it's harder for them to give discounts because the pricing structure is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus their standard line. Would you give a free one-year service on this machine? Yeah, I would still do that. Yeah. So, you know, if you're shopping for the Invicta, well, this is not really a shopping video, but if you're looking for a machine, um, talk to your service company. Um, they might not be able to drop the price, but they might be able to offer you a couple complimentary preventative maintenances or maybe a free, you know, a year of free service, which is nice because now you don't have to worry about service for at yeah. least a year. Uh, for this is for our hot water valve, so it's an economizer or a cold mix uh, valve. So you have a hot water pipe that's drawn directly off the boiler to this valve, and then you have a cold gotcha. right there. That's nice. And, of course, uh, these, you kind of preset them to be right, just right below the boiling point, and then in programming, you program how hot you want it to come out. Awesome. And of course you have two buttons, which means you have two different temperatures or two different vol volumes. Perfect. That's nice. That's a nice feature because yes. the, uh, spitter, the sputtering hot water valve is very obnoxious. Yeah, it's very obnoxious. Okay. And it's especially too hot for Americanos. Um, or whatever you want to use it for. Or, or if you use, do green teas, it's too hot for that. Um, it's too hot for skin. <laughs> It's too hot for your skin. And did we do this one? Uh, so this is a tr pressure transducer. So there is no pressure switch in here other than this that is going to the main board. Uh, so its reaction is immediate. So if you drop pressure by, you know, 0 0.05, it's going to kick it back up. It's going to, you know. It's almost acting like a P PID, but it's not a PID. It's just that it'll that the it'll start heating and pulsing the heat to keep it at temp. But doesn't the transducer work better in a steam boiler than a PID? Yes, because it's, it's faster reacting. Because uh, a PID in a steam boiler, it's sensing temp. It's not sensing pressure. So technically, you could lose a little bit of pressure before you actually lose the temp. So with a pressure transducer, it's immediate. So there's your brew group. So the brew group here again hasn't changed throughout the years. Uh, you know, you have your top heat exchanger tube going here. Typically, you'll have a flow restrictor in there. And then your lower heat exchanger tube right there. Uh, they used to have the flow jet from the front here. They have changed that. It's from the top right here. So right in the center of this down in the group is where your flow jet is. And then, of course, this is their new additional line for uh, adjusting temperatures mm -hmm. at the group. And then... So just going back to adjusting the temperatures at the group, uh, an adjustment can be made by the equipment owner, or or do you recommend that it should uh, it be It can done? be made by the equipment owner. They're removing the top. So it's like anything um, equipment owners should be reminded that when they're removing top or side panels to a machine, that now they're exposing themselves to high voltages and hot, um, you know, Temp scalding temperatures. You know, the pipes are all hot, which you can burn yourself very easily on. So when you make a temperature adjustment, how long does it take for that adjustment to kind of kick in? Uh, it depends on which direction you're going in. Okay. So if so you're going if you're down. Going, if you're going down, what you're going to have to do is cycle a lot of water through the machine and let the machine recover okay. uh, for probably, I would say, 20 minutes. And then if you're going up, then you're just going up. You're just, I would probably give it a good 10 minutes to let it stabilize and then start testing it. So if I had a um, independent brew, you know, multi-boiler with independent brew, how, 
when I'm I make a change, typically I'm going to do that electronically. Uh, yeah, you're going to uh, do through it my in computer program. board. How, how long would it take for that to? It's pretty instant. Well, if you're going if you're going up, yeah. it's pretty instantaneous. So it depends on how far you're going up. But if you're going up, it's only like a minute or so. Okay. Once it reaches its temp, it's fine. Okay. Uh, you got to remember, you're not taking a temperature anywhere in here. You're just you're just setting a, a restriction flow of how the hot water is entering the group. Okay. Um, and then, of course, if you're in on a multi-boiler system, if you're going lower on the temp, then, of course, when you go lower on the temp, you have to run some water out to get the temp down, and then you're good to go. But it's it's pretty instantaneous. So if you're familiar with Ranchilio, you see a lot of familiar parts in here. You know, the, the steam valves are pretty much the same. Uh, if, you know, of course, the, for the past um, multiple years, they've, they've added another uh, uh, vacuum valve or anti-siphon valve on the top side of your steam wand. So when you are done steaming, that'll drop down. So any milk that is in the wand will drain out. So that's a nice feature. These particular wands are their cool touch wand. So they're, they're, they are a double walled stainless steel wand. So that's another nice feature of this machine. What about They've the incorporated the, uh, the clever uh, cam itself, but they've gone just to a stationary knob. So you're just doing not even a quarter turn. Looks like an eighth turn for full on and then momentary. Oh, you can and, do. And then that's both on both sides. Side. They're both going the same direction. So on is is to the left. Momentary is to the right, and the same is with the other side. Where on your clever, it's actually the opposite. Where full on is up. is up on that and up on that, but they're turning in different directions. So how do you take off the drip tray? Is there any anything? Uh, the drip tray actually has two, so right on the side here. Underneath? Yeah, see right here. Well, I can't see it, but oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So Great, you're, yeah. You're pressing on that and you're pulling straight out. Oh, that's convenient. And is this come with the. No, that's part of my cart so that you don't run into the handle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. This, so these brackets here. So you can take these screws out and raise or lower. So I have it at its lowest right now, but you can raise it way up. Oh, let me get over here. So you have it the lowest, so you just yeah, move Yeah, so right it. now I have it the lowest. Um, you can raise all of this, this whole thing up to here, which sure. means your drip tray is basically sitting at more of a traditional level. Not quite that high, but close to yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty high, huh? Yeah. Some people like that. And then some people... But this is... Is this tall? I mean, how how tall so of the, a cut could you get under there? I would say probably just a 16. You could, pro okay. you could probably fit a 20, but you, you're going to bury the nozzle. All right. And so can you just take this off? I mean, do you ever have to... Oh. Yes. So obviously the reason you would take this whole tray out is just for cleaning and cleaning behind. Are you supposed to pour hot water down your drain? Yes. You how often? Yeah, every night. Every night hot water, like how much hot water? A pitcher full. Okay. Pretty much. It, it'll be, a, this is a touch screen. You have four total programmable doses, two on each button. So it depends on how you press the button. So if you just activate it or if you press and hold it. Okay. And of course your center is just manual start stop or it can be a rinse. Depends on how can you- Can you program it? You can program it for a rinse. You cannot program it for a dose. Okay. So you can either have it as a start stop operation or as a rinse operation. So the start stop would be yeah. working it as a semi-automatic. Yeah, okay. Okay. So if you have it as a rinse, so you would remove it and then you just hit the button and then it just will activate. You can tell it how many seconds you want it to go. 
So typically a rinse is only one to two seconds. Okay. I think you can go as, as high as four or five. Yeah. But it's not necessary, really. No. A rinse is nice. So you would just activate it, just do a quick one second rinse out. You know, so any grounds that are on your screen get dispersed out. Any coffee oils that are still sitting in the group get rinsed out. Right. So, I hear a lot of people say when they're first starting out, they want to do a really long rinse. And then you kind of learn yeah, by experience. You don't want to, so don't, don't want to yeah. do a long rinse, especially in a heat exchange system, because you will either spike or you will start to lower your temperatures. Depends on the machine. Okay. Anything else you want to say? That's that's uh, about it. That's about it. All right. Thanks. So it's a it's a really nice. I I like how they built this machine. It's all stainless steel except for internally, but There's externally a- it's all stainless steel. The side panels are super heavy. It's just a built to last. Nice, yeah, it's a very built to last machine.